Worthy for five minutes. Thank you, Chairwoman Mason. It seems now every single week that goes by, we see another story about a bad actor uh, using AI unethically. And while I strongly support innovation and will always work to make sure that this country does not lose its edge to, to China in the AI race, uh, I think that we all must hold accountable unethical creators, criminal actors, and especially those who are creating child pornography and child sexual abuse material. Uh, emerging technology should always be used in ethical ways, and tech companies alongside Congress need to ensure that this happens. Uh, that's why I'm very proud to be working on legislation with attorney generals from all 50 states and four territories that would create a commission examining generative AI safeguards, uh, assess current statutes, and recommend legislative revisions to enhance law enforcement's ability to prosecute AI-related child exploitation crimes. And I'd like to uh, enter into the record a letter signed by 54 attorneys general calling for this commission-based approach. Without objection. Uh, I want to start today by talking about law enforcement's approach to generative AI. Uh, Mr. Sheehan, how is law enforcement reacting to the uptick in AI-generated sexual uh, or child sexual abuse material, CSAM? Uh, has that approach been reactive, as in waiting for images to circulate, or are there ways law enforcement can be more proactive? Uh, excellent question. In, in a lot of the scenarios, these are reactive because we outlined earlier that many of the generative AI technology companies, they're not taking proactive measures to identify and stop the creation of that material on the onset. It's often after the content has already made its way into the wild that you have social media companies and the such that are finding these types of, of, of material and reporting it into our cyber tip line. And we, in turn, provide that information to uh, the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force members who are actively investigating these cases. One quick example, in the fourth quarter of last year, we had a report that came through. It was made by Facebook regarding an adult male who was talking through Messenger to a minor using um, uh, stable diffusion to create uh, child sexual abuse content. Send it to the minor, it was detected and reported that Wisconsin ICAC investigated that case, found out not only was he uh, creating content, possessed child sexual abuse material, and through the forensic interviews, uh, also realized he was abusing his five-year-old son. State and local law enforcement are having to deal with these issues because the technology companies are not taking the steps on the front end to build these tools with safety by design. We're getting this content out into the wild far too early, and something has to be done about this. It's chilling. Uh, thank you. I'd like to point out that the sheer volume of cyber tips has oftentimes prevented law enforcement from uh, pursuing proactive investigation efforts that would efficiently target the most egregious offenders. Uh, in only a three-month period from November 1, 22 to February 1, 23, there were over 99,000 IP addresses throughout the United States that distributed known CSAM, and only 782 were investigated. Uh, currently, law enforcement, to no fault of their own, they just don't have the ability to investigate, prosecute the overwhelming number of these cases. Um, Mr. Zabo, there's, there's been several bills introduced as Congress to adjust the current legal framework to protect those exploited by generative uh, AI and even more that look to combat deep fakes all at once. Um, you know, while many of them are well-intentioned, my concern is that the Department of Justice has not had much success in prosecuting a number of these cases because of the fine line that needs to be walked with the First Amendment rights. So I wanted to ask you, what are the biggest gaps in the current legal framework that need to be filled? So I, I, there's a case um, called Ashcroft v. Freedom of Speech Coalition. And basically what it got into is an overly broad law, well-intentioned to prohibit these types of activities, but it applied to non-actual victims of fake images. And the U.S. Supreme Court shot that down. They said it's a violation of the First Amendment. So one of the gaps is the type of legislation that we've been talking about here, whether it is the, the chairwoman's legislation, as well as some of the other bills that have been proposed from all sides of the aisle, to kind of fill that gap and make crystal clear that AI created content, if it has the image of an actual or identifiable child, is CSAM material, as opposed to the way the laws are currently written, which requires an actual photo. So we are seeing time and time again the bad actors are escaping justice. At the same time, uh, the Invest in Child Safety Act, I think, is a really important one to give law enforcement the tools it needs. One other thing to address is 
groups like NCMEC are taking on tons of information but not necessarily having enough time to process it. And they have a mandatory deletion time for content, so giving them a bit more time to process and prosecute content that they receive and tips that they receive I think would be helpful as well. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm out of time. Thank you, Chairwoman, for having this, uh, this hearing, and I yield back. Thank you. I'll now